Good morning, everybody. We have a little bit of doing right. This is Mrs. Serena. Ladies and gentlemen, in our background, got a little thing. I've tried to explain to people. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is uh, Lila James. Sorry. Who? I thought I was still playing Serena. I'm sorry. Y'all have to excuse me. This is, this is, this is Aaliyah. I mean, not Aaliyah. I mean, Leela James. I'm, man, it's four o'clock in the morning. Y'all gonna forgive me. Y'all just gonna forgive me. Sorry, I wake up like this, by the way. Literally. So, I'm a morning person, not a man. You know how some people, man, leave me alone. I just woke up. Please. I ain't never been like that. Okay, but if you wake me up, there's a problem. The worst thing to do, if I'm sleeping in the afternoon and you come wake me up, whoo you talk about something breaking out. Um, and it ain't no Rick James breaking out either. Okay. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I have been for years trying to tell people about putting together a document for the court. When I do a document, I am writing it in a way that I'm rebutting presumptions and I'm writing it in a way for which they cannot attach their ignorance to something and change the conversation and misdirect the intent. See, what you all don't realize when a judge asks you questions, you're quick to tell a police officer you're not there to answer questions. But you're never telling a judge, excuse me, I'm not here to testify. Well, I just need clarification. No, you don't need clarification. What you need is to understand that it's already been written. And if you want to get technical, no, what you're trying to do is you're trying to sit up there and change the context of this complaint. Understanding is for the jury. Well, if I can't understand, the jury can't understand. You have no idea what the jury can and cannot understand. That's 12 minds against yours. See, y'all must understand that the judge is asking questions so that the judge can find a technicality to dismiss your complaint or to get rid of certain things. That's not the judge's job. It never was the judge's job. Let's see if we can explain to y'all how the courts operate. Remember those old westerns you used to watch? And they would have these trials. And a judge would sit there. And then there would be a jury. Well, those were common law trials. The jury was the judge. That's why the Seventh Amendment says that any trial decided by a jury could never be overturned. They used this throughout the 1800s and the early 1900s. That's why so many slaves were being murdered. That's right, murdered. They weren't being convicted. They were being murdered. It had nothing to do with whether or not the jury was all right. At, excuse me, all right. Anyway, all white or not. It had nothing to do with that. You know what the problem was? That the jury was biased. And they were never questioned as to their biasness. You knew they were biased. Oh, no, I'm just the, the wife of the, uh, the, the slain. And so because I'm the wife of the slain, oh, no, I can make an honest determination. Oh, yeah, I saw him when he came in and killed him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't have a problem being on a jury. No, I can be, I can be objectional, though. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm her brother. And yeah, uh, I, I seen her crying and, uh, oh man, she's, she's been having a real hard time since he came in and killed her brother. Oh, uh, I mean, my, my brother, uh, uh, my, my brother-in-law. Now, uh, hey, wait, hold on a minute. Let me make sure y'all understand about my brother-in-law. That was my best friend. Yeah. And so when he killed my best friend, he ruined my life. 
Oh, no, no. I can be objective uh, as a juror. So, yeah, that, that ain't going to be no problem, me being on this jury. And that's how they would hold juries. Okay? And people were killed, murdered. However, because the Seventh Amendment says no matter tried by a jury shall be over otherwise overturned by any court. Okay. Look, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I, this is Break My Soul by Lena James, and I like this melody and the way she did this song. Now, that's, the, Leela, man, I discovered Leela, like I told y'all, I was going through a bunch of songs that I was downloading, and I saw her, she did one called Prayer. And man, I listened to that song and I was like, oh, that's my girl. Okay, that's I've been with Leela ever since. That was way back in 2011. No, no, no. I'm sorry, Leela James, that was... Oh, no, I was in New York when I first heard Leela. That was 2005. Man, Leela, we've been together almost 20 years. Lord have mercy. Man, how funny... Time goes when you ain't doing nothing but having troubles with the coat. Hold on, let's do something. Ladies and gentlemen, I had to turn Leela off for a second. Because I have to get you guys to understand something. We were talking about the Seventh Amendment, and just yesterday we were having, myself and others were having a conversation. Robbie, this one's for you. And we were talking about the Credit River decision. You guys remember the Jerome Daly Credit River decision with Judge Mahoney? You know, the judge who, after the trial, was found drowned in his lake at his home? Yeah, yeah. In his boat? Yeah, he was in the boat and he was drowned. Oh, no, no, there was no water in the boat, but he, he drowned in the boat. No, hold on now. He drowned in the boat not in the water in the boat he was in the boat not in the water he drowned in the boat no water in the boat water outside the boat but he drowned in the boat you follow me all because of this case and nobody except jerome daly brought the issue up Go back and read the Credit River decision and see that this was a common law trial. Now go and look at the Seventh Amendment and see what it says about common law trials. All trials where a value is over $20 is supposed to be had at common law. Every trial, small claims court, all of these civil trials where there is a value of greater than $20 must be held at common law. When you have a traffic ticket, pay attention, those of you who don't know how to pay attention. A traffic ticket is not a criminal matter. A traffic ticket is a civil matter. The value is greater than $20. Y'all are not paying attention. You're supposed to be entitled to a trial at common law. Now, uh you need to know more about the law before you go in there arguing this because there's some foundational principles to take care of that. There is no such thing, pay attention, as a misdemeanor trial. The law didn't know anything about a misdemeanor trial. That's why it says in all common law trials where the value of the controversy shall exceed $20, you shall be having a preserved right. Preserved. Like a nature preserve? No, like jam and jelly and juice and that, 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 that type of preserve. Anyway, to a trial by jury, which y'all didn't understand because nobody understood what a common law trial was. They took that away from y'all. Common law trials where the jury is the judge. Now you don't you get to pick the jury. Not like they pick juries now. That that ain't that ain't a common law trial. The judge does not get to instruct 
the jury. The jury instructs the judge. That's a common law trial. Well, the Credit River decision, that's all you got to do is put in Google Credit River decision. Do not go to the Minnesota court website to learn about the Credit River decision. Why? Because they make it appear that that case had no value. That that case was overturned. The judge's decision was overturned. The jury's decision was not overturned. Go back and read, people. The jury decided against the bank in favor of Daly. That matter should have gone to the Supreme Court. But they tried to silence, and I believe Daly was more worried about his maintaining his status as an attorney than he was about going to the Supreme Court and proving that the Supreme Court for the state of Minnesota had violated the law. Anyway, when you read and see that it is a jury trial, but it's a common law jury trial. Oh, did you say jury trial again? Oh, no, it's a common law trial by jury. Let me make sure we understand that. Ladies and gentlemen, I told all of you, the jury's verdict was never overturned. The testimony is what you're looking for. That was in Minnesota. Y'all don't want Minnesota cases. The people who live in Minnesota can use that case day in and day out because that's precedent. A jury trial decision is precedent. When it is, I'm sorry, trial by jury, sorry. When it is by common law, that's why it could never be overturned. It sets precedent. That's what common law is. Precedent. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the jury is not the focus. Lawrence Morgan, the bank manager, is the focus. That idiot testified that banks create money out of thin air, that they don't lend money, they lend credit. Go back and take a look. We live in a credit-based system, ladies and gentlemen. We don't live in a money system. Because the bank testified that's how they generated money, they have no right to claim somebody owes them a debt and must pay in dollars. They have no right. You get to return to them what they gave you. And so what did Congress give you the right to do? Pay them back in credits with promissory notes. I've done videos and I've showed all of you that you have to go read the IRS policy on sending them a bill of exchange. Did the video, showed you the code, and I ain't seen one of y'all yet go learn about what the policy is with the Treasury on sending bills of exchange. And do y'all know how many bills of exchange y'all can create backing it with your credits, tax credits as collateral? I know, I know, I can see all the light bulbs going off. Look, I can't talk about everything. It's too much. Too much information for me to talk about every single thing throughout the video, explaining to you all the nuances, all the details. We ain't got that type of time. Ladies and gentlemen, we are running out of time, not running into time. So it is my hope that you all can take the nuances. The Credit River decision was a common law trial. So before you start understanding, thinking you understand about what's common law, go back and read the Seventh Amendment. Okay, just that simple. Now, go back and read the Credit River decision and notice how the judge is not harping on some stupid state law, some stupid state code. He's harping on principles of law. Go back and read. Look at how he focuses only on the principles of law because this is a trial by common law jury. It's only the facts that are presented to the jury. Not all of that argument presumption stuff. Go back and listen to the trial. There were no presumptions. They were just facts. 
and the jury was the arbiter or the judge of the facts. That's why no matter tried by a jury at common law may be otherwise overturned by any court in the United States. That includes the Supreme Court of that state. They don't have jurisdiction because the law doesn't give them jurisdiction. Shame, shame, shame. Okay? This is just the way life works now. All right. Now, now we got to get to the nits and the gritties. Ladies and gentlemen, that is no controversy. Absolutely none of them. Where the value exceeds $20 shall deny to the person the right to a trial by jury. But you're constantly being denied the right to a trial by jury. So use the wording of the Seventh Amendment. Yes, you're going to have to appeal the case. Yes, the judge is going to rule against you, but we don't care. We don't care. We don't care. We don't care. Just keep saying it to yourself. We don't care. We don't care. We don't care. Why? Because we're only after one thing, y'all. We're only after one thing. We're only after to prove that they stupid. That's all. That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to use their words against them. We were trying to prove. That's why we're suing the bond of the judge, not the judge. We're suing the judge's bond. Every one of you have ever had a case where you demanded a common law trial and you were denied, they did not provide it to you, then that's an essential violation of your right to due process. Go after the Negroes. Go after them niggas. Y'all know how it is. Uh Uh-uh. They convicted them niggas during the 1800s and early 1900s. That's right. The wife and the relatives and everything sat up there on the jury, even though they had a bias. Go after them like the, 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 that's what they are. That's how you got to treat them. You go after them as if they were Negro slaves, okay? And you just go after them and you make sure you put them on trial. Well, well I'm sorry, I got to apologize. See, them Negroes, they got immunity. That's right. They got they got civil rights. So you don't want to go after them because they got immunity. You want to go after the clothing that they wear. So what? The bonds. So, you know, see, they're covered in bonds. So you want to go after that bond. And you want to go after that bond in such a way that you want to make a request for the bond number, the bond insurance company, the bond insurance company address the value of the bond, the contact person at the bond's insurance company address. You want to go after that bond, but you're going to ask them to provide it for you first. It's important. Say, I believe I was injured by you. I believe that you didn't have the right to do this and the right to do that. And since you did this and did that, hey, I have the right to file a claim. That's all. You have a right to file a claim. Not that you have a right to be victorious, but you have a right to file a claim. So I need that information. Put your letters together. Put your letters together. That says exactly that. Just put a template together for yourself where you just get to add the person's name and just send it to them. Remember, you're not going after the value of the bond just yet. You're just putting in a request for the information, letting them know that you've been in an accident and they're required to show their liability insurance information with you so that you can sit up there and contact them and they make a determination whether or not the claim is valid or not. Okay? That's what you're doing. And when they don't respond, give them 14 calendar days to respond. And when they don't respond, give them 14 calendar days to respond. And when they don't respond, give them only 14 calendar days to respond. And when they don't respond, then you file a small claims lawsuit against the bond. Not for the total value of the bond. Pay attention. Y'all need to understand how small claims works. You cannot bring in a case that's of greater value in small claims court than what's specified in small claims court. 
So you're not suing for the value of the case or the value of the bond. You're suing for the violation of your right to have that information. You're suing for the blocking of your access. That's what you're suing for. I ain't going to give you the specifics. You got to go look at the videos on YouTube about how to successfully win in small claims court. Small claims court is about the issue, not about the value. So do not go in there talking about, I'm going, I'm suing for the total value of the promissory note. You ignorant mother, I'm sorry, you can't do that. Okay? So you're going to go after the violation. You're suing for the violation only. Ooh, woosa, woosa. Okay? You're suing for the violation only. And you're suing the bond company and the bond. That's the first thing you're doing. And you're doing it for the clerk of the court? That's right. The clerk of the court got a bond too. You're doing it for the prosecution or the other side, the defendant. Their attorneys got bonds too. The attorneys got to be bonded. All public officials must be bonded. All attorneys must be bonded. Okay? <laughs> and you are going to sue the bond, what, bond insurance company? The bond itself, the uh, that stupid idiot that's known as the clerk of the cult, then you're going to sue the prosecution or the defendant attorney, and then you're going to sue the administrative office in that court building. Know why? Because they're in control of all that. They're there watching it happen. Sue them all for violating your rights. Sue them for conspiracy to violate your rights. Yeah, they all knew because they're all in the same court. All the records go north to the administrative office. And that's how you take care of things. I told y'all, beginning of my career with this legal stuff, I'm a 16, 17-year-old kid going in the cult, suing people. Okay, you don't have to be an adult to sue people. I told y'all, if you look at the preamble, they keep trying to tell you that the preamble don't mean nothing. <laughs> y'all must be out of your mind. The preamble has always been part of the Constitution. The preamble, pay attention, it's called the preamble. It has always been a part of the Constitution. As a matter of fact, it came before the Constitution. Before you read the First Amendment, the preamble says, hey, read this. It's the forward, letting you know what the book's about. <laughs> okay? Lord have mercy. So go back and read the preamble. You are not one of the people. Stop claiming to be one of the people. The people dead, y'all. Y'all want to be their posterity, their, their inheritances. Their offspring. Their nieces and nephews and future generations. Okay? You want to be the posterity. Posterity, not posterior. Posterity. Look up posterity and become who you were always meant to be because they planned for you to be their posterity. Ladies and gentlemen, when you guys learn who the pilgrims really were, then you will come to understand why I keep harping on this so much. And why I keep saying, go to that foundation, the foundation, the foundation, the foundation. What was the common law in the United States, not in England, when the Constitution was created? It were those laws established by the colonists when they came over here on the ocean blue Mayflower and that other piece of junk ship they came on. Those laws that they established once they were here, those were the common law. Let me see if I can get y'all to understand common law a little bit better. And then I'm going to let y'all go. There is this thing when you're in prison. Oh, it's called survival. Where only the strong can survive, it's called survival. Where only the strong can survive, it's called survival. Where you got to fight to stay alive is called survival 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 in jail they got a game and they call it survival 
They run it down to you on your first arrival. They tell you what you can and what you should not do. So if you ever go to jail, watch out. Mm -mm. That was Grandmaster Flash telling you about the common law of the jail system. When a person goes to jail, there are the rules of the prison or the jailers, and then there are rules of the inmates or the prisoners. The rules of the prisoners are called the common law. It's not the rules of the court. It's not the rules of the state. It's not the rules of the statute. No, the rules of the prisoners, those in-house rules, those are called the common law rules. You guys have heard of in-house rules. Well, that in-house rules are called common law. So the common law or in-house rules of the United States at the pinning of the Constitution were the laws of the colonists. Okay, remember you, at that time, you weren't following federal trials. You were following trials within your state. And so no trial held at common law. This was not a federal statute. This was not a federal constitution. This was the Constitution of the United States applying to every state. There was no need for a stupid 14th Amendment. It was never divided that way. They never intended it to be that way. When the states established their constitution, it had to coincide with the Bill of Rights. But because people don't know anything about the foundation as to how this nation was established, they are being told things by judges and attorneys over the centuries. Even the judges have forgotten. Why? Because they never did the research. These judges went to law school to learn about not the law, please. Policies and procedures, Administrative Procedures Act, that type of junk. Uniform Commercial Code, which is not even a law. And everybody's shouting Uniform Commercial Code like it's a law. Uniform Commercial Code is not a law, people. The Uniform Commercial Code has never been law. It was never enacted by anybody's Congress. The Uniform Commercial Code is not a law. There is no statute at large for the Uniform Commercial Code. There is no act of Congress for the Uniform Commercial Code. There is no constitutional amendment for the Uniform Commercial Code. The Uniform Commercial Code, pay attention, the Uniform Commercial Code was enacted by a group of attorneys. Pay attention. There is no such thing as a law known as the Uniform Commercial Code. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to get up from here. I'm still laying down. <sighs> it's five o'clock in the morning, and I ain't just getting in. I ain't got to knock on no door and hear no voice, sweet and low say, Who is it? You know what I mean? Leela, take us on out of here. So, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, just imagine if you knew what you thought you knew, but you knew it. Whoo, how dangerous you would be. Don't think he meant for me to lie down with lying bastards. Who would rather see my soul captured and fractured? But you must not know about me. I guess the last laughter. I never ran back. Chasing after cancer. Managing this damage. No, I can't be your raptors. No more. Thank God. Thank you for resilience. Now, I ain't one in a million. I'm from a lineage of brilliance. Who taught me how to bounce? Bye bye. See y'all later.